Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Today is December the 22nd and 24 years ago today, Jean Benet appeared at the Southwest Plaza Mall um, at a pageant sponsored by America's Royal Miss. And you actually heard a short little extract or a little clip from that performance. John Bonet is in kind of a red sort of elf outfit, I guess. And she's pretending to play on a toy saxophone. And just based on the sort of obvious performance, just based on her strutting her stuff, it, she does look quite talented. And uh, what is quite interesting in her performance is her hair. Do you think, looking at her hair, that her hair is a natural color? Do you think her hair is dyed or not? Just up to you to sort of think about it. We're going to look at her hair again tomorrow on the 23rd. But for now, I just want to concentrate on on this particular day that um, she wore this sort of red jumpsuit. And I think the, the outfit that she actually wore during that performance was laying over the ironing board w during the investigation of the crime scene. So in other words, around about three or four days later, this outfit that she'd worn, you know, to the mall in Denver was still sort of just lying around the house. Now, one of the things that's peculiar about the John Bonet Ramsey case is that we don't really have access to the discovery. We don't really have access to the crime scene photos. The access we do have is through bad quality, grainy images, sort of leaked things, this and that, dribs and drabs. But what is kind of fortunate is that there is a walkthrough where the investigators spoke to the Ramses under kind of conditions. And so literally what happened was the various investigators questioned the Ramses on certain photos. So they'd show them a photo and have the Ramses respond. And I presume that they showed similar photos to, to both parents individually and then sort of probably collated their responses. And um, there's more to go into in terms of that, but we're going to... In this episode, we're going to highlight photo number 56 and 57 and 58. And um, we're going to sort of look at that, just those photos and what Patsy Ramsey says in response to that. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, leave a comment. Thank you to all the subscribers, the new subscribers for bringing the total up to 26,000. Thank you very much. And let's get started. So I must uh, first just apologize. I've, I've got a bit of a sore throat. There's just incredible amount of pollen in the air after a lot of rain. So I'm, I'm sort of just got really a sore throat. So if I'm not sounding very clear, if I'm sounding a bit congested, I do apologize. So now we go to photo number 56. Tom Haney, this was in an interview in uh, June 1998. Just think about this, that... Um, about two and a half years, maybe a little bit less, a year and a half after the crime, you sort of have this interview, well, do you mind if we look at these photos and, and can you tell us about it, right? I'm just saying that is when this came up. Th this is one of the few opportunities the police got to talk to the Ramses. And of course, the Ramses would say, no, 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 we were at the, whenever the police wanted to talk to us, it was fine. Uh, we were completely at their, um, you know, uh, discretion kind of thing. Well, here it is, June 1998, and they're sort of still going through some photos saying, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Anyway, Tom Haney refers to picture 56. Now, Patsy Ramsey must respond, and she says, this is the laundry area. I hang things out to dry here. And unfortunately, once again, it's not a clear image we have of the laundry area. We're lucky to actually have one not very clear there's also a laundry area downstairs in the basement which we've referred to already Tom Haney then says can you identify any of the items that are there as having been worn recently Patsy says not really I can't really tell what they are 
So she's not really being very helpful. The guy's asking her, can you identify some of the clothing? And Patsy says, no, I don't really know. So Tom has got to point something out to her. So he says, there's one item up here, I think a dryer. Patsy Ramsey says, a dryer, yeah. And now Trip DeMuth says, 57 and 58. So now going on to two additional photos. Tom Maney says, why don't you tell us what that is? Patsy responds, that is the red jumpsuit that she wore at the performance at the little jacket. And then what she said next was inaudible. Well, to be accurate, that is the red jumpsuit John Monet wore at the Southwest Plaza Mall in her very last pageant on December 22nd, 1996. Now, something I want you to bear in mind, just in just keep it in the back of your head, is ask yourself the question, do you think John Bonet appearing in a pageant just three days before Christmas, now bear in mind, one day before another Christmas party, and an event happened there as well that prompted someone to call 911. But the question is, do you think John Bonet appearing in a pageant just before the incident had some kind of impact on the incident happening in the first place? And I don't think you can answer no to that. I think whether you want to imagine that some kind of phantom intruder was traipsing around on December 22nd, or whether whatever driving forces were in play already came to kind of an inevitable denouement as a result of this final performance, right? Now, let's let's kind of deal with the crime scene. Um, Tom Haney says, you know, why don't you tell us what that is? And Patsy says, it's a red jumpsuit that she wore at that last performance. She doesn't say it's the last performance. She's not very clear about that part. But she basically confirms that it's a pageant outfit, right? Tom Haney then says, what color is the jacket? And I think he's now referring to another item of clothing, right? Unless Tom Haney is not sure um, which is the jacket and which is the jumpsuit. Anyway, Patsy Ramsey says, it is red velvet. Tom Haney says, what were you doing with that jumpsuit that morning? So what Tom Haney is asking Patsy is, literally, on the morning of, of the crime, in the immediate aftermath of this incident, what were you doing with that red jumpsuit? Right? What were you doing in the middle of these crucial events, dealing kind of with the laundry, and why this particular item of clothing? And Patsy responds, there were some spots on it, and I was kind of looking at them, thinking that when I got back from the lake, and that I would take it to the dry cleaner or whatever. Then Tom Haney says, back to photo 57. And now, so now he's kind of going backwards to get clarity over what they're talking about. And then he says, this top cabinet, it is closed in this particular photo. Patsy Ramsey says, uh-huh. Tom Haney, what is normally kept in there, if you recall? Patsy Ramsey, tissue, Tom Haney. In the video that the police took walking through, which was taken some time later, there are these packages of pull-ups, Patsy Ramsey. They would be in there, yeah. Tom Haney, all right. They are partially hanging out in the video, Patsy Ramsey, yep. Tom Haney, would those be the pull-ups that you would normally put on John Bonet? Patsy Ramsey, right. Then Trip DeMuth, 57 and 58. Patsy Ramsey, a kitchen knife. Tom Haney, what would that be doing there? So there's a kitchen knife in the laundry area. Patsy Ramsey, I don't know. Tom Haney, it does look like a kitchen knife. Patsy Ramsey, uh-huh. I don't know what it is doing there. Tom Haney. Do you recall yourself having anything to do with that knife being there? Patsy Ramsey, no. Is it on something? Is that Patsy Ramsey? I'm not sure if that is one of my one of my kitchen knives, to tell you the truth. That must be something. Tom Haney, we would have that. Patsy Ramsey, I could see that. In the picture, it looks like it is a very thin blade, like a grapefruit knife or something. Tom Haney, what about the handle? Patsy Ramsey, I had some wooden handle knives, but I don't know why I would have it there in the kitchen, you know. I don't know why it is there. 
trip to Merth. Other than the knife in the photo, 58, I guess 57, 58. Anything unusual you see there, Patsy Ramsey. This is my sewing kit, the little box. Trip to Merth. That is 58, Patsy Ramsey. Sewing box? I can't make out what those little things are here. The detergent, spray starch, and fabric softener, and there's something on top. And then I think it's a, a, a tide box. Then Lou Smith asks about the same photos, number 58. He says, that's a photograph of the upstairs laundry room area. John Ramsey. Uh-huh. Lou Smith. There's a knife on the counter. What do you recall about that? John Ramsey. Um, nothing. That looks like a kitchen, a, a knife that would normally be in the kitchen. It's hard to tell. Looks like it might be a grapefruit knife or something. We normally didn't prepare any food at that counter. Lou Smith, do you ever recall that knife being there before? John Ramsey, I don't recall, no. Lou Smith, there is an item on the ironing board in that photograph, on photograph number 58. Do you know what that is? John Ramsey, not for sure. Kind of looks like a vest of some kind, but like a bow tie. Lou Smith, is that something John Bonet would wear or something she would wear? John Ramsey, I don't recognize it. So in a couple of episodes, we've spoken about this thing of neglect. And yeah, you just hear about things lying around the house, a kitchen knife upstairs, uh, washing from three or four days ago. We're just talking about general domestic neglect, like neglect of clothing, uh, neglect of, you know, like tidiness, not sort of cleaning up the house kind of thing. And I can tell you, I've got a puppy. I've got a, it's got a lot of toys that lie around. You know, it is easy to get into that situation, isn't it? And so, and I can also tell you, I've actually recently lost a shoe where I literally spent a few days looking for a shoe and eventually I found it under the dog's bed, a flip-flop. And uh, so, you know, you can say, is that ne neglect or is that <laughs> just being a bit overwhelmed and sort of, uh, you know, running around after a busybody kind of thing. But the, the kind of thing I want to also just bring your attention to is, does John Ramsey, you know, was he at John Bonet's last performance in this mall? And it's not mentioned. I don't think that he was. I, I really don't think he was at this performance. The fact that he doesn't recognize this outfit tends to reinforce that. Don't you agree? I mean, we don't know for sure, but Patsy recognizes that outfit and maybe she would as a woman. Some time has gone by, but do you think that John Ramsey attended this performance at the Southwest Plaza Mall? Can you kind of imagine him being there at this sort of mall? Maybe he was there, but there's no mention of it. And bear in mind that this happened, this um, appearance happened two days after his big celebration with Access Graphics. I think it happened on a Sunday. The big Access Graphics luncheon at the Balderado Hotel was on a Friday, and then this was on a Sunday, December the 22nd. So that's just something to bear in mind and to uh, notice, but the plot thickens around these things. And in a weird way, we are back in time, so we December 22nd, 1996, but this is an item of evidence that comes up shortly after the incident. Now, there's quite a lot of debate around this. There's quite a lot of conjecture on forums, and I will post the links to these conjectures in the description. You can make of it what you will. I'll quote from Forums for Justice and Webstooth briefly now, but before I do that, I just want to express my view on the subject. So first of all, I think that that outfit was placed there to mislead so in other words i think that outfit was purposefully put there to send people down the wrong down, down the kind of the wrong garden path if i can put it that way right that's the first point to make the other point to make is that knife i think was there for exactly the same reason i think the kitchen knife was placed upstairs in the laundry so that people would imagine that that knife was somehow relevant and that, as you can remember Patsy saying something about, I don't remember that knife. So she's kind of trying to suggest or not trying to suggest, maybe she's just imagining or inferring or whatever the case is that 
the knife came from outside the house. And so now you want to pay a lot of attention to the knife, right? This knife is the si- this, the is a sign of an intruder, right? And then you've also got to ask yourself, okay, well, what if there's pageantry involved here? What if the knife is meant to distract you from another knife somewhere else? And you can ask yourself, was there a knife somewhere else? And if there was a knife somewhere else, was that knife doing something particular to the crime that you might not want someone to think about? And I'll leave it at that. By the same token, this red outfit that's got spots on it, oh, could it be blood? Could there be blood on the red outfit? Let's let's kind of preoccupy ourselves. Let's obsess about this outfit that Patsy wants to wash, you know, in the morning that the crime happens. So let's direct attention to this red outfit. And then the question is, should we, are we kind of having our attention taken away from some other clothing, right? Such as the clothing, and I shouldn't laugh, but the clothing John Bonet was literally wearing when she was found. And I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to say the circumstances in which John Bonet was found was weird, meaning she was found wearing oversized bloomers and it appeared that she'd been wiped down. So she apparently urinated um, in, in her clothing, but she also seemed to have been wiped down, that someone had wiped her down. Now, you've kind of got to ask yourself, if there was some kind of intruder... Why on earth would he do whatever he did? So let's let's presume he undressed her, did something, wiped her down, and then dressed her again. Why why on earth would he, would anyone do that? Um, if you think about stranger crimes like that, um, often the victims are left completely the way they are sort of left. And a, a very good example are the Ripper um, crimes, where the the person is left literally in the nude. There's there's almost an intention to, I don't know, brag about what has happened. There's there's no respect. There's no sensitivity for the victim in that sense. And so so why on earth would you do that? Not only wipe up the crime in a way, but which is somewhat understandable, somewhat possible, but also then re go and find the undergarments and the wrong ones, and then dress the person, you know, it would be at a massive risk in in a scenario like that. Now you've got to ask, but now why is this pageant outfit, literally a pageant outfit, part of the pageantry of the crime scene? Why are things going on in the base, in the upstairs laundry room? Well, I think the answer is because it it's asking you to pay attention to that area. And I think another area that you're sort of being asked to pay attention to is the kitchen, right? I think the reason the flashlight is there, prominently there, is also to say, hey, look at me. This was kind of involved in the crime. And it's one of the biggest flaws, I believe, in almost all the uh, narratives. No matter who is telling the story of the of John Bonet, whether it's a intruder scenario or a Ramsey did it scenario almost everybody seems to think the torch was the murder weapon or the torch was used I don't I think the torch is part of the pageantry and one of the you know there was a big lawsuit against the CBS documentary Uh, what is ridiculous about that is the sort of story that um, literally something happened in the kitchen and the torch was used and then I guess put back on the kitchen counter and and that there's literally some kind of incident happening right there in the kitchen. It's just, as far as I'm concerned, it's really silly. It's a silly thing to to think about. And one of the reasons why the torch isn't a, can't be excluded is because the shape of the torch matches the fracture on the skull. But you can equally make the argument for something else, some other, let's call it, implement or piece of equipment. Can you think what that might be? And now we come to the Forums for Justice comment. I'm going to, as I say, leave a link in the description. But I just want to quickly refer to the comment here, 
where someone says, you know, why would Patsy take the time to rinse out a red jumpsuit that had apparently been lying there dirty for at least a few days? So in other words, it's been lying there for a few days anyway. Anyway, why on that day of all days, that morning of all mornings, when they had to kind of get ready to go to the airport, when they had lots of other priorities on their mind, why would you wash that item, right? Why would you be concerned about that item then? And I think Patsy's response might be that, well, immediately when we come back from Charlevoix, from our holiday, then we are going to, um, you know, use this costume again and John Bonnet is going to need it. But the other counter argument to that is the housekeeper was su supposed to come in uh, on the 26th. So the housekeeper could have done that. And I don't know if Patsy was somebody who would tend to wash these things herself. She might have been, I don't know. But I would wager that this whole brouhaha around, you know, because this person's asking, why was it so important? That is why it's there. That is why it's part of the narrative to get you asking questions that are going to take you in circles. It's to get you to distract you away from something else that you should be paying attention to. And there's a lot of that in the Ramsey crime scene. Misdirection, distraction, smoke and mirrors. And the important thing isn't just to say, okay, so this is a misdirection. It's to say, what is this, for, what is this finger that is pointing towards this thing, actually pointing away from? And that is always an important question to answer. The post on Forums for Justice goes on just saying, why didn't you just put it in with the rest of the clothes that were waiting to be laundered? Anyway, that was a question posted in February in 2004. And now we go to March 2007 and we go to, we're going to the Web Sleuths Forum. I'll also post a link to this. And someone else was wondering, why is there a red turtleneck sweater that ended up wet and balled up on the bathroom counter? Now, this is also in that same general area of the laundry. And the poster goes on to say, you know, before going to the White's party, Patsy wanted J John Bonnet to wear a red turtleneck. This means it would be ready to wear. In other words, not wet. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether this red turtleneck refers to, I'm just saying in my own research, my own knowledge, whether this refers to Patsy's red turtleneck or John Bonnet's red turtleneck. But the, the, the whole idea was that they were going to go to the party at the Whites, kind of almost like mother and daughter wearing matching outfits, right? John Bonnet ended up wearing the white sweater with a star on it, kind of a second star. And she actually went to bed with it and then was found in it. Patsy Ramsey misspoke once in front of, this is said inverted commas, on web sleuths that she misspoke in front of three officers stating that John Bonnet Ramsey went to bed wearing the red turtleneck. And then maybe this is what actually happened. Then she says, how did the red turtleneck end up wet if it was just discarded before the white spotty and not used afterwards? Now, I don't really want to go into this into too much detail. I don't want to talk too much about red turtlenecks except just to say that I think it's the same thing going on here. The whole idea is that you, again, you, you have this red turtleneck that's wet. I um, say this under correction, but I do think it may have been John Bonnet's, you know, the little outfit that was wet. Then you've got to ask, why was it wet? And I think the answer, once again, is so that you're going to pay attention to it. Why was this washed? Well, it wasn't actually even worn that night, so... Isn't it to direct attention away from something else? And I would wager what it's meant to um, direct attention away from could be Patsy's clothing, Patsy's red turtleneck. And as far as I remember, she wore a red turtleneck and kind of a checkered um, jacket or some kind of jacket. And, but we will talk about those fibers in due course. I see we're coming up on 25 minutes. This is way longer than I really wanted to uh, go through this. I just want to deal with one more thing, and that is to do with something that came up in the websleuths.com that is 
web series with two B's and I actually feel that that forum is actually meant to almost fool people into thinking it's the real Webster's forum. The real Webster's forum, what I call the real Webster's is, you know, it's got pretty good analysis and it's spelled with one B. And then there's another one with two B's that I am not sure is very reliable because it is certainly punting a particular narrative. Anyway, um, that particular entry reads regards December 22nd and 23rd, Patsy calls a caretaker and tells them they're coming on Christmas Day to Charlevoix and she sh- and that she should decorate the house prior to their arrival. She would like garland and a tree if possible and then she decides to call the interior decorator and so on and so on. And then something about The Ramses never come. Now, I believe that entire entry is meant to make you think something about, I don't know, also think in circles. Did the Ramses plan on on a getaway? Um, Did they plan on something happening in Charlevoix? Um, it 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 is intended, I think, to make you want to investigate the Charlevoix home as a crime scene. Right. In other words, forget about everything in the house in Boulder. What was going on there? Why did Patsy make this call? What you know? Let's look at photos of that. And I just think it's a misdirection, whether intentional or not. It's totally irrelevant to this. And just as a little way of um, just reinforcing the point that I'm making, is there's a forum that's also a Ramsey apology forum called PB Works, or it's on the PB Works uh, page. And just this is just a very simple illustration. If you go to the books that have been published, so this encyclopedia provides an archive of supposedly all the information, supposedly a neutral thing. And when it refers to the books I've written on this case, it misspells the name every single time. And I've actually contacted the forum admin person years ago, and they just refused to change the name. So you've got to ask yourself, what is that? Is that misdirection or is it just accidental mistake? Is it oversight? Is it trying to be intentionally misleading? Anyway, thank you for listening. In a follow-up to this episode, I'll be responding to another YouTube channel who's been quite strident in his criticisms and his attacks on this channel it's not something i often do it's not something i like to do but um sometimes i think one does need to turn around and address some of these let's call them remarks thank you for listening if you haven't subscribed please do like share leave a comment and i'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 14 in this ongoing series